Saludos muchachos, ¿cómo están? Daniel Sicar nuevamente saludándolos, nuevamente en un video interactivo compartiendo la, el aprendizaje del idioma en inglés de una manera dinámica con temas muy interesantes. Very interesting topics, guys. I want you to take advantage of all this what we teach you here in, on these videos because it's, it could be very useful on your daily basis. So today working with an excellent topic, very important topic, which is another perfect tense. The present perfect tense is one of the pillars of this uh, language. Es uno de los pilares en los tiemp de tiempos perfectos, el presente perfecto. Very popular, very useful, very effective in the, in, in the way in order to communicate every day. So uh, we see here that the perfect tense or the present perfect tense handles or is in charge of situations that started, they have started in the past, they started in the past, and at a certain point they could still happen, they could still happen, but they started in the, in the, in the past, right, and they could also, they could also, they could have also finished, they could have also finished in the past, okay, so we will check it. Perfect, present perfect, ladies and gentlemen, in this image. In this image, we have an affirmative example, a negative example, and an interrogative example. So, the formula that we see here is the pronoun, right, in parentheses, plus half, which is the auxiliary, plus has, right, or half or has is of the auxiliary, it depends on the pronoun and the past participle, always the past participle of the verb. That's why if you haven't checked, if you haven't checked the past participle of the, the videos about past participles, we invite you to follow us, to follow all, all our videos in order to review them. La idea es que revisen los previos temas de pasados participios in order to get in touch and get more familiar with these tenses, okay? So let's go with some examples, okay? So we have, I have played. It's a situation that happens in the past at a certain point, see? Yo he jugado, right? And it's probable that this situation finished, but you can redo it, okay? You can retake it. So I have played, yo he jugado. The negative form, I haven't played, right? I haven't played, of course. In this picture, it's very important that we notice that we need to add, I can edit, the ED. I haven't played, okay? Please make that correction at home. That's not right, so, but we want just to give you a brief idea. I haven't played, that's the negative, and the interrogative is also wrong here. Have I played? Have I played? He yo jugado? Have I played? Always working with the participles. Participle is ED. Okay? You have played. Tu has jugado, right? You haven't played. Tu no has jugado. You haven't played. Have you played? Has tu jugado? That's with the second personal pronoun, we continue with the third personal pronoun with he, he has played or he has eaten or he has been to Miami or he has worked right for that company before, right, that's the third uh, the personal pronoun, the third person, he hasn't played, right, and no ha jugado, he hasn't played, he hasn't eaten, él no ha comido, he hasn't written that, él no ha escrito eso, he hasn't read the book, right, which is the participle of read. So, always the verb in past participle, guys, always. This is wrong, so just make your corrections. The verbs go, in this case, played goes with, in the past, under the participle mode. Okay, he hasn't played. Has he played? It ends, it's a verb that ends in Y. So when you add the ED, it sounds like it. OK, 
okay so he hasn't played now she has played ella ha jugado she hasn't played all right has she played has she played now we have played it has played sorry the little kitty or the dog it you use it let's remember that we use it for animals objects okay things you know, usually with no life so you use it it has played it hasn't played and no jugado talking about the little animal it hasn't played the question has it played so that's when you use has because the auxiliary is has because we are dealing with third person we have played we come back we come back to have okay because we use we the personal pronoun we the personal pronoun we goes with have okay for the present perfect we have played we haven't played have we played right that's the correct formula you have you have played you haven't played no ustedes no han jugado you haven't played have you played and ustedes jugado they we go with they they have played they haven't played have they played right that's the other question have they played very good so you have to recap this i mean and just replace the verbs for example they have a run right all this week ellos han corrido toda esta semana have they run all this week the question han ellos corrido toda esta semana have they run all this week no they haven't run all this week they just have walked solo han caminado they just have walked okay so this is how do you use the perfect tense the present perfect situations that usually started in the past and we can say that ended in the past right situations that you did at a certain point in the past ahora procedemos con la siguiente imagen vamos a ir a la siguiente imagen donde vemos ever and never we see ever and never debemos estar viendo ever and never and for providing more information for example ever is muy usado en los tiempos perfectos porque nos da una primera vez de la acción ever means when you have done ahí estoy usando el presente perfecto cuando has hecho when you have done or when you yeah something before cuando has hecho algo antes there was a moment in the past when you did that when you yeah executed that action okay when you did that action let's check this out let's check it out sorry so have you ever ridden a motorcycle so if at a certain point if at a certain point in the past you rode a motorcycle right road is the past of right if you rode a motorcycle it means you did it you had your first time doing that so we need to find out with the present perfect so have you ever alguna vez has montado moto have you ever ridden motorcycle ridden a motorcycle you can say yes i have puedes responder con el auxiliar or no i haven't i haven't ridden que es el pasado participio de ride i haven't ridden any motorcycle no he montado ninguna moto we see here in parentheses that says it says something like you want to know if something has happened you see basically we want to know queremos saber si algo ya ha ocurrido we want to know if something has happened right before the verb now with never con never también se usa mucho con el presente perfecto para indicar que nunca se ha realizado alguna acción so i have never climbed i have never climbed climbed spells no climbed como tal in past spells c for car l for lima i for igloo m for mike 
B for boy, E for elephant, and D for doctor, right? Climb the Mont Blanc, right? I have, I have never climbed the Mont Blanc, right? Yo nunca he escalado, I have never climbed, in this case, the Mont Blanc, which is a proper noun. And in the parenthesis we see here when it says meaning, you say that something hasn't happened. What is behind hasn't is has not. Remember, every time you see don't, doesn't, hasn't, haven't, mustn't, needn't, there is always a not right there. Do not forget that that's a not, okay? Which is a negative uh, statement. So that's the meaning for never. Ahora si continuamos con la siguiente, en nuestra siguiente imagen. Very good. We see here that we can also use, también podemos incluir, o usar lo que es steal. Steal is cuando nos referimos a algo continúa. An action continues happening. For example, if we, if we say that they still haven't woken up, es todavía siguen sin despertarse. They still haven't woken up. That situation of being asleep, asleep, porque están en el adjetivo, en el estado dormido, they still asleep, siguen dormidos, okay? That is, that happens, that is happening, está sucediendo, entonces, la puedes usar en el presente perfecto con esta expresión. Still goes before the auxiliary, the auxiliary, va antes de la, de la auxiliar normalmente, they still have not woken up, siguen aún sin haberse despertado, sin, sin haberse despertado, ok? They still haven't woken up. The meaning, no, in this negative sentence is the action hasn't happened, la acción no ha pasado for the moment. No ha, ha pasado, no ha pasado, it's still happening, still happened, sigue pasando. They still haven't woken up, siguen aún sin haberse despertado. You can also say, um, when you talk about still, right? I still have, I still have had the pictures you gave me. Sigo aún, sí, I still have had, sigo aún manteniendo, I still have kept, yo he seguido manteniendo las fotos que me diste. I still have had, okay? Yo aún he tenido las fotos que me diste. I still have had the pictures you gave me. Very good. When we talk about yet, right, which spells Y for yellow, E for elephant, and T for Tom, we talk about a situation that this action hasn't happened for the moment, but it goes at the end of the sentence. So we can say Peter has not, or Peter hasn't, Peter hasn't asked me, always the past participle, Peter hasn't asked me out yet. No me ha pedido que salgamos aún. Peter hasn't asked me eh, out yet. Ask someone out is the synonym of, or is an expression to say, to invite someone, to date someone. Yeah, to, to invite someone to do something, okay? And it goes at the end of the sentence. Normalmente va al final, right? Of the sentence. And still, it goes like before the auxiliary. They still haven't, for example, with the still, another example, they still haven't called me. Ellos aún no me han llamado. Still have had the pictures. Yo aún he tenido, yo aún he tenido las, las fotos que me diste. I still have had the pictures. In the, in the question, yet is also very common in questions. I mean, yet is muy común en preguntas. Has John split up? Uh, John, como tal, ¿sí? split, up, split up with his girlfriend yet, right? Has John split up with his girlfriend yet? Yet, sorry. Has John split up with his girlfriend yet? Todavía no se han separado o dividido. Has John split up with his girlfriend yet? O ya, ¿sí? Ocurrió. You want to know if the action has happened. Queremos saber si la situación ya ocurrió, ¿no? Has John split up with his girlfriend yet? ¿Ya se han separado? 
en preguntas, but it goes at the end, va a ir al final. Entonces, that's the difference usually with yet. It's very, it has a relation with a negative, with negative statements in the American English. In affirmative, or I mean in negative sentence goes most of the time at the end, right? And in questions as well. In questions you use yet at the end. Has John split up with his girlfriend yet? Haven't you finished your homework yet? Todavía no has terminado tu tarea? Aún no has terminado tu tarea? Haven't, haven't you finished your homework yet? So these are uh, very uh, sensitive topics or very important topics. All these are adverbs of time. What is ever, never, still, yet. Those are adverbs of time. There is also an, a, a, another one that is called no longer. No, N-O, and a part, uh, it goes apart longer. Que es, yo ya no continuo ahí. No? I no longer work for there. I no longer work for, for them, okay? So keep a check back, we will see them later. Entonces, sigamos revisando todo este material, sigamos revisando nuestros, sigan conectados con nuestros videos, por favor, no, no olviden suscribirse. If you have comments, if you have new ideas about a topic, si tienen alguna sugerencia acerca de los temas que hemos visto, queremos siempre, we want to improve to you guys, give you better assignments or better videos in order to improve your English. Continuamos con temas eh, cercanos a lo que es el nivel B1 and eh, we want just to keep in touch with you guys. Check our videos, check movies, practice all the time, eh, be surrounded by English and of course we will continue with you. Mi nombre es Daniel Sicari y seguimos en contacto para nuevos temas. Mm -hmm.